No, 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 no. 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 Yeah, we were, I mean, we did get to the base, but we had to interrupt. So we're up to the entire now. Why is this not recording properly? Okay, that's better. Uh, we'll start from the uh, sixth line from the bottom. Chavrai b'shem Rabbi Yochan, the chaver said name Rabbi Yochan, time of the Rabbi Yehuda, the logic of Rabbi Yehuda, that has, says that if a, a husband has relations with his wife and his mother-in-law, that they're both forbidden unto him. No, you're on the wrong page. Zion Ralev. No, page before. Page before. We backtrack. Sit from the center bottom. Chavai B'Shem Yochan say, Time with Rabbi Yehuda, the large Rabbi Yehuda says that if a person has relations with his fa- mother-in-law and it was with his wife, that they're both forbidden. Because it says, Be'eshis and Fuhol, so they it says, In five days she burned he and they. Monica, what are you talking about? Him and the Yitzhak, it's about really burning. And the Yitzhak, the Achas. The last one is b- burnt. Now, I didn't make this perhaps, probably clear last night, but what happened is that you have relations with your wife and then with your mother-in-law. Is your wife at, in, at fault that your mother-in-law had relations with you? No, so why should your wife be burnt, right? So it must be talking about only the mother-in-law. <laughs> Down with mothers-in-law, right? So, but the thing is that, however, Monica in the instrument says, "El Chazmin, I made an illustrate of it's not concerning spread burning that you only burn the mother-in-law." Today we learn this or it's about the prohibition, and it means that it backfires on you in that only your mother-in-law would get burnt at the stake. It's not actually at the stake, but however we burn people. But your wife is also forbidden to you. You have to divorce her wife. Why? Because it says plural. That's it. I could do Rabbi Kiva. That makes sense, Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Kiva darshins the Gemara that way. However, Rabbi Shmuel, like Rabbi Shmuel, who, who darks the pasuk that way, Rabbi Shmuel darks the pasuk differently. How so? Tiny Rabbi Shmuel Shmuel says, "Be'eshi tzafu also v'eshen." The fire should burn he and they. Who v'es shnia? And he darshins that you burn him and the second one. Meaning, if you have a relationship with your wife and then your mother-in-law, then you burn the mother-in-law, not the wife, right? But in any event, so he learns that said as referring actually to the burning itself. So according to Rabbi Shmuel, there's no source for Rabbi Yudas Svoha that, or Rabbi Yudas Halacha, that both of them are forbidden, both the wife and the mother-in-law, because the only way you can learn that is if the word Eshen is not necessary in order to teach us who gets burnt. So that I say, it teaches us that they both are forbidden. But it's necessary to teach us as Rabbi Shmuel Darshan's who gets burnt, i.e. the second one gets burnt, because he darshan's that Hesed means the second one, so then you have no possible to teach us Rabbi Yehuda's statement that both of them are forbidden, both the wife and mother-in-law. Okay? But anyway, says Mara, after that, that's kind of like it was an interlude. For you, Beishamay Donim, now we get back to Beishamay. Beishamay was the one who said, Ad Ovad Aleph, that um, they're both forbidden when you have relations with your wife and her sister. It forbids you, her, a- and the wife. Okay? So Beishame made a Kavachomer, very interesting Kavachomer. They said like this We're a light Isser male. Comes out, has relations with a light Isser female. Oh, so it's love. It forbids the person who creates the prohibition. Now, I don't know. The corporate name motion seems to go uh, awry here, with all due respect to them. It seems to talk about if a daughter has relations with an uh, adulteress, right? She's married to somebody else. So then the woman becomes also to the adulterer, right? So, Ma Makum Shabbat Israel Kal Israel Kal Osen Sa Osrov, Khan, it should be instead of Kavan. Here, by your wife's sister, Sheba Isa Chamal Isa Chamura. This is a more severe prohibition. Achos Ish is more severe than Achos Ish. Why? The more is going to explain why in a minute. So therefore, in Adish Nasser Sosa, it's not a Kav Chomer that the cause of the prohibition, meaning the the um, the uh, the husband the, the husband is forbidden on his own wife. Again, just like over there. The adulterer is forbidden on the wife, even if she divorces her husband, because he caused the problem. So to the husband, who caused the problem by having relations with his wife's sister, should be forbidden to stay married to his own wife afterwards. Okay? So says the Gemara, 
No. Um, Rabbi Yochanan uh, says, which is a, the life prohibition, which you're extrapolating. So Rabbi Yochanan wanted to say, as I just said, Rosh the Pirka, beginning of our parak, we have a woman who's married to a man, she thinks he's dead, and then somebody else comes and marries her, right? Which is a shashish, right? Vahe no call. That's considered to be a light sir. That's the most severe in the books. You throw the book at them, right? Anyway, the chaymer, severe. Says more no, that's less severe. Shani, it's easier. She needs to slow their cheter. There, we they thought was mutter, right? Since they thought was mutter, so therefore it was uh, it, it should be lighter, as opposed to here where they thought it was severe. Where there was no, you know, it was severe was your wife's sister. So there, it's much more severe. It's a kavachomer. If there you're forbidden, then here you're certainly forbidden as well. So it says the Gemara, Rabbi Yeshu, Rabbi Amar. That's not the pshat. That's not the Yisrokal. That's not the, the Yisrokal at all. Rather, what did Yisrokal tell you? The case of is like this. Uh, 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 the brides where Bishar made a kavachomer said about somebody who takes back his divorcee once she married somebody else. So that's, and then we said, if over there, right, she's forbidden to the, her husband, in other words, her original husband can't take her back after she was divorced and married to somebody else. So, Kavachomer, we should say that if a woman has, if a man has relations to, with another woman, uh, is with, no, woman, with his wife's sister, that uh, he can't go back to his wife afterwards. So it says, Amara, Lomali Mishri says, a kind of a parenthetical remark. Why are we talking about a Grusha? A woman who's divorced, remarried completely, and then divorced again and tries to marry back her original husband. I feel even if she got betrothed only to a second husband, the same thing should be true. So it's more out, begin to Rabbi Yisrael and keep her. No, it's not true because Rabbi Yisrael and keep her. Rabbi Yisrael and keep her, I mean, a Erosim if all she did was get betrothed to a second husband, she's allowed to go back to her original husband. Okay, so if we said if she got married to a second husband, it really is a parenthetical remark, nothing to do with our discussion. Rabbi Lezo, may I be nafli, Yavama, Shinafli, Neshne, Yavin, Yavas Nisa. Beisham is extrapolating and making the Gavachon based the case where Yavama falls before two brothers. Uh, and also by Echame and Maimer, one of them does Maimer, Chachak, Paul, Eshnia, and the second one has relations with her. So the second one has related, so now they're both also. Neither of them can remain with her. Neither the one did Maimer, nor the one who had relations. They both have to, the one, the one of them has to do Chalitza, and, one, and they both have to give Gittin. So if that's the case over there, where it's a lighter Isser, because Yivama is only alive, it would seem. Although it's not clear, actually, I take that back. There, Yavama is not so light. Actually, it's her. It's your. Yeah, it's a lot. It's not not Kores because there was a chi of Yibum here because the, the wife did have no children by her husband. So it's chi of Yibum. So for the the, the other Yavam to have relations with her, it's hard to do so. There is only a, a worst a lot. So that's the case. So also man chaman chakupol sheni. One of them did mimer, and the other one then had relations with her. So in that case, we say that she's forbidden to both. So Kavchomer here, the other one should be forbidden to his wife. So it says more uh, again a parenthetical remark. Why are we talking about a case where the first one did a mimer? I feel also about mimer. Even the first one didn't do mimer, or le- instead, let's say he gave a get. So we have the same problem. If the first one gave a get and the second one had B.O. with her, so she's also on both of them. And vice versa. Lomli Ba, why do you say the second guy, Dafka, had B.O. with her? Had relations with her? I feel low by low. Even let's say the only guy only did, said guy only did Mimer. She still has to get divorced from both and has to get a Khalitza for one. So that's what I'll tell you. Begin the Beisham, I, uh, begin Beisham, I begin Beisham, Rabbi Shimon. The Tama, it should be the Tama. Begin Beisham, begin Rabbi Shimon, the Tama. Because Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon holds it like Rabbi Shimon over there. And boy, will this stir your memory. Rabbi Shimon holds that Mimer either works all together or doesn't work at all. Right? We had three Shittas. Rabbi Lezab ben Arach holds that uh, Mimer is complete. Rabbi Shimon says, I don't know what it, the, if it works or not, but it works or it's completely. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work at all. And Rabbi Shimon holds it's a Miktas Kenyan. Okay? Now, even Rabbi Shimon holds that uh, that my, although Mimer is either kind of completely not quite at all, Get is only a Miktas Kenyan. Miktas partial. partial. Rabbi Rangamliel holds that Get is, Get 
works the same way as my Merkur and Rabbi Shimon. That either works at all, doesn't work at all. Works at all, completely it doesn't work at all. Right? But Lamaisa, Rabbi Shimon holds Mimer either works completely or doesn't work at all, and get is a quasi acquisition or quasi ptur works only halfway. Okay? So there is its Ray Shama holds like Rabbi Shimon, so therefore there's no such thing as Mimer Achar Mimer, right? Right? Because either the first Mimer worked completely or it didn't work at all, and if it didn't work at all, the second Mimer doesn't work either, right? So Mimer after Mimer is meaningless, right? The only thing you can have is Bia after Mimer. And vice versa, if the get made the mikzas kinyan, if the get made a quasi kinyan, right, or to begin with, the, she got a get quasi kinyan, quasi ptur, quasi exempted, quasi didn't. So then afterwards, you can't talk about bia after get the same way as you talk about bia after mimer, right? Because then this, the bia, the second bia, is already questionable what it's going to affect. In other words, here it's about she need to get from both, right? But if the get is a miktas p'tur, so I don't know exactly what the next step is going to be if there's a bia afterwards. So the Gemara is saying, in order not to enter into that question of what exactly the suffix would be and make the suffix as clear cut as the suffix can be, we said the first brother did a mimer, which either works or not, and the second brother then did a bia, which if the mimer worked, then the bia is irrelevant. If the mimer didn't work, then the bia is relevant, and that's the most clear-cut suffix without the extraneous uh, 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 elements of quasi kinyanim and not quasi pturim. So that's why he picked the case of a mimer and after the mimer the bia. That's a parenthetical remark that I do lose our senior. So in any event, so this is a kavachomer again. Bishama makes kavachomer from one of three cases, either from ish right, from a married woman who had adulterous relations, or from a woman who was married, divorced, and then remarried, which is prohibited, uh, divorced, remarried, and then divorced again, and remarried back to her original husband, which is prohibited also, or a case where a woman fell before two Yivamin, uh, two brothers, and one did Mimer, and another did Bia, in all these cases, the woman is also on both, right, so the woman is also on both, and in all those cases, says Beishamai Kavachomer, in the case, where a uh, man has relations with his wife's sister, that he's also on both the sister and the wife. Okay? That's Bishamah's position. So says the Gemara, Omra Bishil, Bibal Achos Ishto, Bishamah Isil, never in a machlokus, when you have relations with your wife's sister, Shalom Pasal Sishto. Your wife is fine. I mean, your wife might not want. But, you, you as far as you're concerned, you can stay with your wife. Machluku, I'll tell you what the machlokus is. Bibal Chamoisoi, you have relations with your wife and with your mother-in-law. Shabbat Shammai remain pasal. Shammai says you can't remain with your wife, and you can't. Well, you can't. God can't remain with your shvigar, but you can't remain with your wife either. Beisulim lo pasal. Beisulim says you cannot remain. You, you didn't re- pass your wife. Only your mother-in-law was pasal anyway. For you beisulim done it, and beisulim made of their own logic, and they said they used to, they, they they laid out the case as follows. Ha'ish muter b'chol nashim. A woman before a man before he starts marriage is allowed to marry any woman he wants, right? And a woman before marriage is allowed to marry any man she wants. Kitsha, once he betrothes her, who asala he forbids her, he asks her. To a greater extent is the prohibition that he prohibits her. May he osrato from the prohibition that um, that uh, that she prohibits him, right? How so? Osrato, uh, uh, Osrato, he forbids, uh, Shahu Osra, he forbids her to marry any not a man. And she only prohibits him from marrying any of her relations. Okay? So far, so good. So says the more, okay, so now it's a Kavachomer. What's a Kavachomer? Ma'im he she'isura iso merube. She who's got becomes more severely prohibited. Vishogra alav, and she unintentionally commits adultery against her husband. Shogra alav isura. Lo nezra la muter la. 
she doesn't become prohibited to her husband if it's unintentional and he's not a Kohen, right? So her adulterous relations do not prohibit her to her husband. Who she sugo isumemuat? He who has less prohibition in marriage. Marriage by him is of a lesser status. And he inadvertently transgresses his relations with his mother-in-law. Don't ask me how it was inadvertent. But if it's inadvertent, ain't no dinshli also or lamutalo. There's not a kavachor that he's not prohibited to. He to me is originally permitted. Me to his wife. But it's an error that he has relations with. Yeah, but so does she. Because then, by definition, anybody's an everybody's an error. Everybody's an error. Right. The Gemara is assuming that that's also called an error. Just like a mother-in-law. Okay? But it says when the obvious question is, Hadein Din, that logic works B'Shoyge. When she was un- they were unintentional. But what about B'Mezid? What about if he intentionally had relations with his mother-in-law? Okay? And, and then we know if a woman intentionally has adulterous relations, then what happens to her? She's up the creek, right? She's prohibited, right? So what about adulterous intentional relations with his mother-in-law? Well, they still say in that case, Right? So it may seem naive. How do we know say the same thing? Say the same thing by intentional relations. Tam loyma oisa. So we pull a pasuk out of that. Says oisa. She's forbidden. Oisa shkivas osarta. There's no case in Torah where have relations with one woman and another woman becomes prohibited. Doesn't work that way, right? Of course, there are cases like that, but the cases more mostly by marriage, by marriage, not by relations, right? If I have relations with my wife. So that doesn't ask her everybody else because I had relations with her, but it asks her everybody else because I'm married to her, right? So there's no case in which relations with a woman will prohibit somebody else at all. And therefore, relations with my mother-in-law can't prohibit relations with my wife. That's what he's saying here, okay? So amazing night time. Lomar Oso, so Shrivasa, Oso, so. I guess it says Oso more than once. Shrivasa, Sarta, your your forbidden relations prohibit you yourself. And Shrivasa, Cherso, Sarta, but the forbidden relations somebody else cannot prohibit you. Imi Avui to Shmuel Bar Imi. Imi, the father of Shmuel Bar Imi. B'shem Rabbi Yudah said the name Rabbi Yudah. Halacha Rabbi Shimon. Then like Basila, that uh, we do not ask her his wife. As Uvda coming Rabbi Moni. Well, a case like this came for Rabbi Moni, where a kid had relations with his. By the way, it's a case like this in Nadi Bihuda too. A very famous case of a guy, Tam Chacham, who was living in his father-in-law's house, and uh, you know he was being mazana with the mother-in-law. Um, uh, I haven't told you recently, but it's an old Maybe case. You Maybe when we learned in the, with the Vavli. So and uh, so the question was, then they do, you know, after several years, uh, so he went to do tshuva. So they asked him what he said to do. So they do tells him what to do to do tshuva. You know, not to eat meat on Mondays and Thursdays. I don't remember fasting Monday, Thursday, not to eat meat the rest of the week. A whole bunch of things he tells him to do. He tells him you can stay with your wife. We be passing his mother to his wife, but and you don't have to tell your father-in-law. Uh, I think he says you don't tell, tell your father-in-law because he's not tell, he's not mechuyiv to believe you, and because you're only in eight echon and therefore you're not mechuyiv to tell him, which is a tremendous chiddush. Because his mother-in-law obviously is also on his father-in-law because she was mezana, but since she's not mechuyiv to believe you, so therefore you're not mechuyiv to tell him. I believe that that was the psak, if I recall correctly, which is a very shocking thing, very big chiddush. Anyway, so uh, so here such a case came from Ramana. And he made he, he made the guy divorce his wife. Okay? Not like the Nabi Huda, right? Obviously. To serve a Krabi Yehuda. So it says, what? Because he was a Krabi Yehuda? We don't pass a Krabi Yehuda. Maybe there's one who passed and said, both are us, or both the wife and mother in law. We don't pass a Krabi Yehuda. Allah show you some Israel, it's low. The reason was that, the reason was that the, uh, the, uh, the the mother-in-law con- used to come always to the daughter's house, and when she used to come, so they used to succ- res- suck succumb to to succumb to temptation. So therefore, he made him divorce his wife, so he would avoid his mother-in-law. Okay, so it was like a a siog not to come to this unfortunate situation again. Rabbi Bob, Rabbi Nuna, Rabbi Bob, Rabbi Nuna, Rabbi Zaira, Tavai and Rami, they all said. Now this is going back on the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, uh, Rabbi Yossi said, 
Koshu posay de acherim, posay de atmo, koshu eno posay de acherim, eno posay de atmo. I will explain that clause in a minute. But he said it's going back to be in the parak. Ma Rabbi Yosi b'sharet for him. And there was a conversation of this. What does Rabbi Yosi say about everything else? So Rabbi Yosi says the woman of the beginning of the parak, right? A woman who's married. They said her husband died. She went and she married somebody else. Turns her first husband shows up, right? So Rabbi Yosi says she doesn't get anything, but she does get a ksuva, right? And that was that because Ksuba she gets to go and she's supposed to go. So, so we already said Mam Ray Yosi Bishard for him. We asked about where's Rabbi Yosi say about everything besides Ksuba. The Shreem that we learned from our Mishnah. Because our Mishnah is going at the beginning of the parak. Rabbi Yosi Mishnah, Koshu posted their chem, and the way we learn is like this. Very interesting way of learning it. Koshu posted their chem anytime based in causes him to be possible. Based in makes the problem. How is based in made the problem? Because they only had an eight echad, and they had to go to Bastin because without Bastin you can't allow women to get remarried on the basis of one witness. Yeah. Right. So Koshu posa dechem. Any time the psul occurs by others' intervention, posa de atmo. So uh, every, he he loses everything himself. Meaning the first husband doesn't get her mitzia anything she finds doesn't get her handiwork anything she makes because any time the psul happens through Bastin. We pass all everything. We make the whole thing null and vo- uh, you know, bad. No, but the, we sever all the relationships. The reason, of course, why we do this is to make sure when something comes to base and absolutely sure of the facts, lest something bad happen as a result. Because she ain't a place to him, but a case where it's not done uh, by base meaning that there are two witnesses. So anyway, she can marry. It didn't fail, require a function of base thing, right? Ain't a place to that's well, In that case, we will, she, he doesn't lose everything. In that case, he he will get the mitzia and the mitzia dying, and the relationship is not completely torn asunder. In the, in the case where there's only one witness, why is he being punished? He's not. He's being, not really being punished. He's losing. Uh, she's dying. being punished. Right, we said. But that. as we, but peripherally, she's got to suffer in the uh, in the um, in the in the shuffle. You're right. He shouldn't be punished. Right. But we're punishing him backhandedly, getting at her. Well, it was severing her marriage relationship we altogether. Not her already because she doesn't get the ksuva. Uh, no, according to Rabbi Yossi, she does get the ksuva. She doesn't get everything else. And even though this is also to his disadvantage, but nonetheless we have to do it in order to to p- declare this marriage null and void, in, in order to make sure that she doesn't ever go to this, uh, you know, d- take this lightly. Okay? So it says the Gemara. Now, let's... Uh, Skip the the the, uh, the next line because it's redundant. Uh, just says the beginning of the parak again. Rabbi Hilo Shem Rishim and Lord said, "No, that's not what I'm going to talk about. Talk about something else. Talk about Achos Ishto Nesua. Very strange. Uh, uh, what can I do? I just report it. I don't I don't make it up. It says if you, if if guy had relations with his wife's sister who's married, then his own wife is possible. But a guy had a relation with his wife's sister who's a spinster, an old maid, or unmarried young girl, so then his own wife is okay to him. What's the difference? So it says the Gemara, Rabbi Yil B'Shem Rishim ben Lohi says, Achos Ishto Nesua, his own wife, if his wife's sister is married, Hovu Pose Dechem, since he renders his wife's sister then unfit for her own husband, right? He wife swapped basically with his uh, his brother in law, right? So since he rendered his uh, since he rendered his uh, sister in law unfit for her husband, place the atzmo, so he loses himself his own wife, right? But if his wife's sister is uh, un- unattached, however, in a place of the he doesn't render anybody else un- unfit, and a place of the atzmo, he doesn't ruin himself either. The Mara of Hila, B'Shem, Rabbi Shimon Lakish, Rabbi Hila said, Rabbi Shimon Lakish, Tzricha Heimenu Get. That's a very, uh, 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 it means like, the, he, <laughs> it's a weird case. The case is like this. Who will we tell you what she lost, would need to get? Name Moshe explains that um, a guy's brother in law went to Chutzlarts with the guy's wife. Okay? Ruben and Shimon are brothers in law. They're both married to sisters. Okay? Sh- R- R- Shimon goes to Chutzarts with Mrs. Ruben. Don't ask me where they went together. 
It's not relevant. They went with honorable intentions. Okay? They traveled to Chutzlaritz. Okay? Now, as they were Chutzlaritz, he heard, Ruvain heard, that his wife, Mrs. Shim, Mrs. Ruvain, died. And together with his brother in law, Shimon, right? So he goes now and he marries Mrs. Shimon. Mrs. Shimon, of course, is not related to him. It's not a evil relationship because he and Shimon are not related. But since his own wife is dead, he's allowed to marry his wife's sister, right? Then they come back. Okay? Mrs. Ruvain and Mr. Shimon come back. So his in that case, Rabbi Hila holds Mrs. Ruvain requires a get. No, Mrs. Shimon requires a get from Ruvain. Right? Even though it's a mistaken premise, right? He, he was never really married to Mrs. Shimon, right? Because Mrs. Shimon's husband was alive. Nevertheless, he has to give a get to Mrs. Shimon. Why? Because it's like the first mission of Masechta, right? Because uh, it's the opposite, actually, because it's about the man. But the man should not have gotten married to, to Mrs. Shimon unless you check it out completely, right? And since... Uh, uh, now, in this case, this is the case in which Rabbi Hilo says, since... Mrs. Shimon needs a get from Ruvain. That's why Ruvain is not allowed to take his own wife back either. Because it looks like he was married to Mrs. Shimon because he has to give her a get. Right? And you're not allowed to marry the sister of your grusher. You're allowed to marry the sister of your dead wife but not the sister of your divorced wife. So since he's got to give Mrs. Shimon a divorce... That's why he can't take back his own wife. You see that? Even though it's not a real divorce because it wasn't right. a real marriage. Right. But nevertheless, since the Mech Mar sign issues, right? That's what it says here. Uh, that since uh, 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 so since she, the Mrs. Shimon requires a get from Ruvain, that's why Mrs. Ruvain is forbidden to go back to her own husband. Okay? It says Marvei Chavir. Now this is the story back case of Mishnah where you had a guy who married five sisters. But each one was a half sister of the previous one. Remember that case from last night? Okay? So it says my house this work. Now this is this is this is complicated. This this is back to really enormous so kind of depressing. So here the case is like this. First let me show it to you inside here. It's actually in the case of Mark Gibbs is one person missing. But this is a real Appalachian case here. You have Okay, this, let's start from um, Yaakov, but the Gemara really works it backwards. Yaakov was married to Leah. Leah had a daughter, Dina, right? Then Yaakov died. Leah went to marry Chetzro. Leah had another daughter, Yocheved. Yocheved is Dina's half, half sister, right? Their half sister is through the mother, through Leah, right? Chetzro had another wife, Keturah. Keturah had, had a daughter, Sora. Sora is not related to um, to uh, to Leia Dina Yocheved, it's a stepdaughter. Sora is Leia's stepdaughter. Okay, that's what's called Choregah's stepdaughter. Then there's a, a Baktura. In the meantime, had been married. Uh, uh, then Chetzron died. Now Ketura goes and marries another guy, Besuel. Okay, so Besuel ha- and with Besuel she has a daughter, Rivka. Right, and in the meantime, Besuel is married to another woman whose name was Chana, and she has a daughter, Milka. Okay? So this is, Mil- Milka's half-sister to Rivka, Rivka's half-sister to Sara, Sara's half-sister to, to uh, Yocheved, and Yocheved is half-sister to Dina. Right? But there are three different families here. Now, says more in, in, in examine this case. Uh, um, uh, uh, hey, Chavir, what's the case of our Mishnah? Givar Isle Barta, a certain guy that's Besuel has got a daughter. His daughter is Malka, right? Okay, he's got this daughter Malka. Besides that, Isle uh 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 Givar uh, Isle Barta Vichorga, and he's got a stepdaughter as well. What's his stepdaughter? Sora, because Sora was is his wife's daughter from another marriage, right? So he's got his own daughter, which is Rivka, and besides that, he's got a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, he's got his own daughter, which is uh, Milka. Milka's got his own daughter, Milka, 
And besides that, he's got a stepdaughter, Sarah. Rivka will come to later. Okay? And then he's got uh, 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 into his wife, Isle Barat of His wife, Ketura, has a daughter, right? His, da- his wife, Ketura, uh, has a daughter who's Sarah, who's not related to him. The Chorga and another Keturah has a stepdaughter, Yocheved, right? Yocheved is her stepdaughter, right? So he's got Besul's got his own daughter, which is Milka, and a stepdaughter which is Sora. Keturah's got her own daughter, Rivka, and her stepdaughter which is Yocheved, right? So far we've carried c- c- covered these four women. As I said, we won't get to Dina, but Dina's a given, okay? So. Um, now they married each other. Besul and Ketur married each other, and Violid and Barta, and they had a daughter in turn, which was Rivka. So we covered. Actually, we didn't cover Rivka till now. We didn't cover Rivka. We had Besul has a daughter Milka and a stepdaughter Sora, and his wife Ketura has a daughter Sora and a stepdaughter Yocheved. And then they married each other, Basul and Keturah. And then together they had a girl, and they had a daughter, Rivka, right? And then, Dina, as I said, is not mentioned. Mashari saw min chorgata ditata. You start from the, the wife's stepdaughter, meaning from Milka, and you work your way down. And that's where Misha starts. He married Milka, then her half sister, Rivka, then her half sister, Sara. Then her half sister Yocheved, then her half sister Dina. So if Milka is alive, she's muta. He's muta in Milka. Sorrow is not related to her, and Dina is not related to her, but he's also in Rivka and Yocheved. And vice versa, if Milka is dead. Okay. If you understand that case, you are fantastic. But in any event, you get the idea. Okay. Says the Mishnah further. More interesting stuff. Ben Teishu Shari I mean that. So it's more interesting. Why did Kamar bring this up now? Just just explain the case in the Mishnah. No hidden agenda. Don't look for hidden agendas. You're too big a pilpulist. Don't look for hidden agendas. It's not there. Pantation Shari Okay, a kid who's nine years old and one nine years and one day old. Who posts say the Achim. If he has relations with the Yavama first, he ruins it for the other brothers. If the brothers have relations first, then they ruin it for him. Ella. But how there's a difference. Shupo He only spoils it if he has relations before all the brothers. Vachim posting chilo v'sop, but the brothers spoil if they have relations even after him, because we're not sure what the status of his bia is, right? So therefore, the brothers can ruin it even after he has relations, right? Kate said, "How so?" Ben Teishu Shani v'yamechad of a guy's nine day, day years and one day old. Um, Shabal Yavimto has relations with his yavama pasa. He renders her unfit. Aide Achim for any of the other brothers. Baal Achim if However, after the, the 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 nine-year-old did relations with her, so the brothers have relations with her. Are the brothers also by mime, They do mime with her. Or nuts no get her, give a get. Or chutz do chalitz on her. Pasul yada they ruin it for him as well because we don't know what his status is. Now says the Gemara. Wait a minute. Habesof and no posel. What happened? Why? Why? If let's say already one of the adults, the uh, um um. Had my, did Mimer, one of the adult brothers, and then the kid brother did Bia. Doesn't that possible also? No, it's only have a way in which the kid brother can possible at the end. If there was Mimer, and then afterwards Bia, so his Bia should possible because Mimer is only questionable, right? So it says the Gemara again. It's a question. El and here the carbon A changes the the, the gear so. El it should be Bim Mamaro, not Lachar Mamaro. It is Mimer. Uh, 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 he, uh, it should be Mamara in a poison. It is Mamara, he doesn't make her possible. In other words, make a pro, make, uh, make up soul after one of the other bros did already Mimer, because his Mimer is, is, uh, uh, his Mimer does not make her possible. Avol, however, be also poisel. If he has bia after one of the brothers in Mimer, you're right. In that case, he passes for the brothers in Mimer because Mimer, we don't know what the status is. Okay? El shu poisel b'davrachel. The difference is like this: he passes with one thing. What does he pass with? Only with bia. 
But the brothers, they pass it with four things. What are the four things they pass it with? They pass it with Bia, with Mimer, with Chalitza, with Get. Any of those things can render the Yavama unfit for the little boy. Okay? A little boy can only render the Yavama unfit for the big boys by doing Bia. But if they do anything to Yavama, which includes Bia, Chalitza, Yibum, and Get, so they pass it for the little kid. Okay? How does it work? This case of a nine-year-old in one day. Says you come to the right place. I'll explain it to you. Being leave no year then. It says if somebody buys a, 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 a Jewish maidservant, so he's allowed to to uh, set her up for his son. Right? He's allowed to destine her for his son. Leave no miado, but only for his son. He can't uh, des- he can't uh, uh, he can't uh, destine his maidservant Laachim for his own brothers. Okay, this is so you several places in Shas. Yud when a man buys a shifka uh, 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 not uh, ama ivria ama ivria, so he's supposed to marry her. If he doesn't marry her, he can set her up for his own son, right? Mm-hmm. But not for his brothers, only for his son. Why is that? And the Vashari Terry so coordinated to take out the next four words. Let him be able to destine his Jewish maid servant to his brothers from a Kav Chomer. His own son! Can his son do Chalitza if his father dies? No. You know why not? Yushami doesn't say why, but the Bible says why. Why can't he? What? It's an aunt. It might be his own mother, right? Well, it's at least an aunt. No. You did a lot of my bain shano come to after the chalitza. Son can't do chalitza, right? I assume that it's because his father couldn't do chalitza for whatever reason. He was his own young brothers, not children. You guys are such long done him. Why can't the son do chalitza? Chalitza on what? His mother? Yeah. Well, if she's in this rear room, there's, you know, it's, there's no chalitza in Yibam anyway. Why? Why? She has chocolate. Right. Right, exactly! Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. She's an Erma! <laughs> yes. You can't do chalitza because it's, 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 it's their kids. They're no, it's no even chalitza involved, right? So it says where my bench ain't no contact of the chalitza yibum. The son can't do chalitza yibum, right? Harei miyadolo, but he can't be miyad. He can't take the arm of Ria as his own wife. Ach, he should contact of the chalitza. The brother who can arise instead of his brother and do chalitza and yibum, right? Ain't no din she then is not a kavuchom that he should be miyad or right because he he seems to have a strong affinity because in his. Okay, he can do chalitza, whereas the son can't do chalitza. Says the Gemara, no. Loi mamar to beben shu kam tach to bestei achuza. A son inherits his father in in, uh, in automatically when his father dies, right? Tavachim is opposed to a brother that doesn't inherit his brother automatically when his brother dies. It's only if the brother has no kids, right? That he inherits, but otherwise he doesn't inherit. Since he doesn't get inheritance of a field, it doesn't get, there's no din, no proper din of yud. Now, when it's in, uh, the reason why steachuz and yud are connected is because steachuz and, uh, uh, and yud are similar in that they both have to do with inheriting relationships. Because bear in mind, that Yud, even though an Amav is not really owned by um, by her master, Shivcha Knainis is really more properly owned by her master, but the idea is similar, right? It says by Shivcha Knainis you, you, you own her and you bequeath her to the next generation. So, so to hear Yud can be seen as a form of bequest, a living bequest, from a living father to a living son, right? I'm bequeathing to you even though we're still alive, I'm bequeathing to you the right to marry this Amo Ivriya. Okay? So therefore, whoever gets to stay at Chuzah when the, 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 this person dies will also be next in line logically for the concept of the viewed. Okay? So it says, 
Now, the action for the Gemara goes on. There's a little bit of a question here what the continuity is and the Mecha Mayim as a whole void here. But the Shai Teretz Yitzro brings down that there's something missing here which appears in the Mechilta. And what should be here is a line, a long line, if you'll indulge me. It's, uh, the question is, the Kodesh is the Tachlum I'm the country. Let's turn around. Let's say that the brother to be the first heir of the father, right? Not, not the son. And we said, put the same logic before. Umayim aben sheinu nichlas, you don't have this. Umayim aben sheinu nichlas, tacht of libum. If the father doesn't, if the son can't do yibum or a chalitza, right? Nevertheless, nichlas tachos te achuz, he does take over the field when it's left over as an inheritance. Achim she nichlas tacht of libum, the brother who does do yibum, eno din she ikonis tacht of te achuz, so maybe he should get te achuz as well. In other words, the Kavachomer is not a good Kavachomer because if you want to make Kavachomer like that, I'll change the Kavachomer, right? I'll say the Kavachomer is, uh, 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 you can't, I should change, no, uh, you can't learn from Steachuza because I can make Kavachomer to defeat the Limon and say that on the contrary, let the Bim leave no Yodena. As I state in Pasuk, Yod is to a kid. It says explicitly the Yod goes, if you don't marry the Amma, so you give it over to your son, right? Leave no Miyada, uh, 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 he destines his Amavir for his son and not for his brother. Now let's continue with this line of thought, says Omar. To his son, leave no miyado, he destines her for his son, but not to his grandson. He only works for his son. Why? He asked him why. But Pashas Nachlos, I know that Ben Ben Kaben. By inheritances, if there is no son, it goes to the grandson, right? So hacha here too. Leisa vad vach leisa vid ben keben ben ben keben. He don't make a grandson like a son. Why not? Am Reb Zira says I can't give out the kasha. Mad the mali hodem ilsa. He can give me a teretz on this kasha. Why don't we make a grandson like a son by you? On a mashpe kundi ton, I'm going to give him a bottle of fine wine. They didn't have single malt scotches back then, so I'm giving him a bottle of fine wine. Right? Hey, Sir Rabbi Tanchu, Sir Rabbi Tanchu gave an answer. Are you Pashas Nachlois? Pashas Nachlois, you asked before. By Pashas Nachlois, I received so Ach Kiben, the Sharko Krovin Ben. By inheritances, anybody can inherit. It's just a question of who's first in line, but anybody who's relative can inherit. So that's not a proof to our case of Yud, where Yud is unique. Right, that could be used as a type of marriage which is uniquely suited to the son, as opposed to inheritances where a grandson is also like a son, because there we cast a much broader net. Right? Again, by Nachlas, I pass now as I receive Akiben, Bishar Kol Ben. Everybody can be like a son, as opposed to over here. And here, it should, should the carbon A change the gears to be instead of the word Ain, which you have next for Ain, he throws in a whole bunch of words. He says. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, not yet. The next one. Here it just, just takes out the word aid. Here it says, Haresi Sakaben, Shakur Ben, Ato Isa Ben, Ben Kaben. There you make a grand cycle song. And here the Kormen Aid says, Aid adds, the Khan here, by Yud, Shalos Isa Akaben, we didn't make a brother like a son. The Shakur called him and other relatives as well. Aid Ato Isa Ben, Ben Kaben, here you don't make the grand son like a son. Okay? So that's one answer. Then other answer why a grandson doesn't do yud. Hey, Sivan Rabban could the great sorry in the rabbis can say and said, Hare Parshas Timaeus. I'll give you another example. By Tuma, a coin. Who's Levi can he go? He can go to a brother's Levi. Hare Tuma, a Sisa Akiben. A brother's like a son. Vishaka, a Kroven Kaben. And other relatives, fathers, mothers, are like sons. You can go to the Levi as well. But ain't they said Ben Ben Kaben, a grandson cannot go to his grandfather's Levaya if they're Kohanim, right? Can't go to grandfather's Levaya. So how, so there you see that grandsons are not always like sons. There's certain areas of halacha, for example, like Tuma by Kohanim, or grandsons are not like sons. So we had two answers, Rabbi Ra, Rabbi Zira. One answer was that you see from Parshas Nachlas that that uh, many other people are like sons and they're not like sons by the youth and we see from part of the other terrors was Rabban and the Katsrin's terrors that we see by Tameos that a, a, a son goes over a brother 
uh, 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 son, so you can be metami for it, not the other way. You metami for a brother, you can't be metami for a grandson, so you see a grandson is not so great, such great shakes necessarily all the time. So our master, Rabbi Zira, said, Ha'azu kundito, and my good wine went down the tubes. Because between these two answers, I'm going to have to give all these people the drink for having told me why we don't make a grandson like a son when it comes to youth. Okay, the Vimiv Nolia there. Now the next Gemara is kind of iffy. What exactly it's talking about? Because it's a redundant Gemara. The 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 the, the, the long Ribas in the afternoon test, he changes the, the the one word in the sugya in order to make the sugya not redundant. And he says the first sugya is Rabbi Yosi and Racha, and the second sugya is the same sugya but it's Rabbi Yochan and Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. And that way, and we have Meitam Tam Yushami, two parallel sugyas, one after the other. Where since there's a name change, so the Gemara brings it down as if they're two, the, the, as if they're separate, even though they're quite redundant. That's how the read Baz learns it. I don't know if the Shari Torah says it's well because I think it works out smoother, even though I'm not sure it's, it's true. But he says there are two issues here. When you do yield, you could require two possible consents. One consent you require is the sons. The other possible consent you can require is the the girls, right? Now, we're girls. Now, we know, we know when the father marries, that the father would marry the Amma, so they don't need his consent, her consent. Because the consent was already given by the father who sold her to slavery. But the father sold her to the father. Now, when the son comes to take her, maybe the son has to get separate consent from her, not from the father. Okay? Because the new ball game, right? So, says Um Vim loiva dana ladas. You loiva dana. It has to be ladas. On Rabbi Yechonah, Rabbi Yechonah said leis kan das. You don't need das. And this is the, the one the read bas changes. Instead, Rabbi Yechonah says Rabbi Yosi. It's interesting thing. Could you look at the read bas for a minute down there? Read bas and daf nun tes someone else. Read bas says in the first column, in the seventh to last line, he says. Uh, you see that it starts be Yushami? There's a bracket on the line before that. But Dover said, Motsi, Kampon, be Yushami, a Medrash. Many times you find Yushami, Aleph, Reishu, at Barashi, Tevis. As an abbreviation. We'll have a saint arriving in our great iniquities. Eno, Yodi, Mihu, Bala, Memra. We don't know who it is. At Shiova, Mashiach, Tikenu, Vigale, Lonu, till Mashiach tells us. Chen, Kasam, Machaber, Madness, Kunazal, Ala, Medrash, Bak, Tamasa, Ayan, Shah. It's interesting. We don't know very often who the ratio is. Most of the time we guess by default it's Rabbi Yochanan, but we have no way of actually knowing. Yeah, many times you said it's Rabbi Right, it's by default I said, but here you see it's not yeah. clear. Okay? So we assume that here it is Rabbi Yossi. And he said, Leis kan das, you don't need das. Now, I'm Rabbi Yaakov Racha, it's kind of Rabbi Yossi, it's not true, you do need das. Now why is that? Here, now here I'm going to learn again, like I said, the Shari Torah series, so that we need her das. And the reason is because uh, he's because we hold like it's kind of Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yosef holds the only time he can be miyai to his son is if there's more than a shove and puta left in the amount of time she has to work because we know as time goes by she the, we deduct from her purchase price the amount of time that she worked and therefore she, if she wants to redeem herself she needs to pay less money because we prorate it over time so if she's been prorated down to less than a pruta there's no yield Hi, what about the first money? It's gone already. So therefore we see that at the point in time when she's Misya Edes, the yield takes place with the remainder of the amount of money which her labor is worth. So therefore since it's as if the wedding is taking place now, not previously, because we're going by the amount of money left at this time, therefore we need her consent. Okay? It's an indication that it's a new Misa right now, and that's why we need her consent right now. Despite the fact that we would not have needed her consent for her to be married to the father, that's because back then it was a contract between the father and the father. But now it's a contract between her and the son, so we need her consent. Okay? She has built up her own equity. What? She has built up enough equity in her well, own Well, she hasn't built it up. She has remaining enough equity. Because she was sold, let's say, for $600. So, I mean, she's $100 a year, right? So that's her equity. At the time when she's she's sold, those six hundred dollars had passed hands to her father, right? So she doesn't build up her own equity; rather, she diminishes the amount of equity that her master has remaining in her. That's really what it is. Okay, it's the same idea, though. And it's less influence that her father has. On her right. 
Well, the father has no influence at this point. Whatever ha- if the father, that's why I say, if the father was Mi'ayit, so that would have been a result of the original contract, but that's the water under the bridge. That's the more saying. So, as the Marmite Shmuel Barab Duma, Afilo Tema Iskam Krabi Yosir Yehuda, even if you hold like Rabbi Yosir Rabbi Yehuda, doesn't do you any good. Lo, it should be Ketanahi. She's a Ketanah. It says Katanu, but it's Ketanahi. It should be, she's a Ketanah. So, therefore, how she can give consent? There's no consent necessary. New issue. Even though he had that old das, we need his das. Okay? Rabbi Yochamar miyadena, not true. Miyadena, Belim no gola, Belim no katan, the youth is both to his adult, his, his minor son, and to his adult son, Belim no das, Belim no das, he don't need das. Rabbi Shemin Loki, 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 Shemin Das, right? You must have das. Without das, it doesn't work. Okay? So it says the Gemara. Um, I'm Rabbi Yaakov Baracha. I'm Rabbi. I don't remember what that is. One second. Uh, I, I, uh, no, I don't. I don't. But I have, uh, what you call them, ba- uh, my kids are babysitting, so I have to try. So, Nate. So, uh, so, uh, he says, Rabbi Shim Lodzimer, any miyadol, no, no, kato, el, eh, bilvadu das. With, you have to have das. Okay? But now, it says in word, ben teshu shonim, v'yom echod. A kid who's nine days old, Oh, it's me talking. I must have called myself. While well, I was in my pocket, I must have hit the send key and sent myself a message. I have three minutes of your shawi. It's recording. Okay. Say it some further. I'll die to review. So I'll die to So it says, Bentesha Shrine Vyay Mechod. A boy is nine day, nine years and one day old. Osa Mona Lequain Godo. If he dies, he's he, he, he marries a woman, he dies, so his his widow is a widow, and she can't marry Kohen Godel. If he divorces his wife, or it was the does Khalita on a Yivama, Grusha Khalutza Kohen Hediot then his wife or his Yivama is a Grusha Khalutza Kohen Hediot. So how does such a thing happen? How can a nine year old get married? So Daiti Rabbi Yechon, the Kohen Rabbi Yechon do Potar Lob Yudin, he says a cotton has Yud, Nicha, we have a case, right? His, his father married him off in Yud to an Amoivriya, right? So that's a case where a minor can get married. Nicha, Yudin Shiesh Bar Kinyan, oh, Shiesh, look, I don't remember this in Bavli at all. That I don't remember the Bavli ever giving a case where a cotton can get married. But here's a case by Yud. He, bar- the, he marries uh, the Kinyan, also a monocline girl, therefore, if his father is miyayed him to her, his Amoivriya, so they're both Ketanim. He's a Katan, she's a Ketano, because there's only Amoivriya by Ketano, right? And therefore, uh, when he dies, his, uh, his wife is an Amona, right? You, uh, also a monocline girl, Grusha Chalutza Koin Hediot, and he, Grusha Chalutza for Koin Hediot, right? Uh, 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 cause later on, if he divorces, when he gets, becomes an adult, he divorces his wife or does chalitza, uh, then uh, she begins to for a uh, the, the pass of her coin hediot. Chalitza lav dafka, I think here, because I'm not sure how chalitza would work here. Anyway, I'd like to share my luck is to put up in his suin, tape to him in a chalitza by yivum. But according to Shimon Lakish, who, uh, who says there's there's no such thing as yud for a cotton, right? You only have nisuin. So then, how do you ever have chalitza or yivum? Oh no, wait a second, so what's this? Oh, I, I got made a mistake, I see. Uh, he makes a crucial coin, go, 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 crucial of Chalutza coin, hey, means like this. If he divorces his wife, then he becomes, then his wife becomes also to coin Hedio. But according to Rachel, it has Chalitz work. If he dies childless, which he probably will since it's a cotton, then his wife has to undergo chalitza, right? 
and that chalitza renders his wife possible to a co to a kohen. Okay, so that was according to Rabbi Yochan. But I thought Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. How can Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish have such a thing? According to Shimon ben Lakish, the part of Nisuin it says you you have to. There's no such thing as Yud Vayikra. And so we have to be Nisuin in order to work. Tape two and chalitza you. How how do you have um, a, a case? Where a cotton marries a woman and then she has to undergo if he dies chalitza evil. It's not shy of such a thing. It's not shy chamonul koyin kol. It's not shy kruch chalitza koyin It's not shy anything really. But we picked that question on chalitza evil. For our team, then we learn nasa ishu meitzah raise a petura. If a cotton married a woman and she died, right? Even if they're childless, she's exempt from chalitza evil. And there's no chalitza evil in that case. They weren't really married. So I'm Rabbi Avin. Answer Shimon Lakish, Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yehuda. Shimon Lakish goes to Rabbi Yosi Ben Yehuda. What's Rabbi Yosi Ben Yehuda? The tiny came let this in a brayso. But Teish Hashanah Bnei Mechad. If a kid's between nine years old, Admin Shtei Mesei Hashanah Bnei Mechad and twelve years old in one day, Shavi Shtei Saris, and he become gets two hairs when he's nine years old. Out between nine and twelve, I raise the sum. It's a wart. Doesn't indicate he's an adult. Rabbi Yosi Ben Yehuda Omer Harel Simonim. No, this indicates adulthood. Rabbi Yaakov, Rabbi Boom, Hashem, Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi said, Vein Sha'am du Bo Simonim. As long as they stayed there from the time he was nine to the time he was twelve. Also, we have a case of Rish Lakish. A cotton can possibly marry when he's nine years old if he had two hairs then, which he kept all the way till his bar mitzvah. In that case, his marriage is about marriage. So Rabbi Yochan says it's about marriage if it was yield. Rish Lakish says about marriage. If he had simonim, he had two heirs which he retained till the time he became bar mitzvah. Simonim doesn't give das; it just gives. It does not. No, it does. It does. Yeah, that's a sign of das for for Torah purposes because that's maturity. Rabbi Yosi by on the bar mitzvah the bar yasel on the question on the bar mitzvah simonim lemafreu nasa ish or mikanal hava does work retroactively or from here on in. Now, according to Rish Lakish, it's not a kasha. We said it must be retroactively, because otherwise, there's a scenario where a katan can make grusha, chalutza, amona, so it's got to be retroactively. But his child is according to Rabbi Yochanan. So, Rabbi Yavun, shita le'im afreo. Rabbi Yavun said it works retroactively, unasa ish. Kosh came lab, and it certainly works from here on in. Departa, dar Rav Shem ben Lakish, right? Because he learns, like Shem ben Lakish, and they, Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yudha, that this is the scenario where he got Simoni when he was nine, kept his bar mitzvah, works retroactively. That's how he learns, right? So, Vilama Leis, Rabbi Yosi, Potter, Dad, Rabbi Shimon, Lakish, Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Huda. Why does Rabbi Yosi ask the question, not learn like Rabbi Lakish, according to Rabbi Yosi, that it works retroactively? On Rabbi Mona, Mona said, Do you teach away? He doesn't know. Rabbi Yosi, boy, because he's Rabbi Yosi, has a question. Now, the way the Rid Baz learns, it, I can't get into Rid Baz, but he's prior that before the gift supposed to be Rabbi Yosi, now Rabbi Yochan is from this line over here, but it's very late. I don't, can't get into it now. So I reminded the Rabbi Yosi. He says Rabbi Yosi had his kasha, right? He didn't know. He boy, I'm to Baba Shatzi money to my friend. Now see Shem Mikael Ab. But he didn't. Uh, even the Reish Lakish clearly learned this retroactively, but he didn't know if it works retroactively. Okay, so it says my Nicha Amana. I understand how he leaves her di- uh, an Amona. He dies. But uh, what about a Grusha? How does he leave her a Grusha? So how does he Megarish her? When does he give a get? He has to give a get as an adult. A child can never give a get. Tipa, according to Reish Lakish, and according to Rabbi Yochan, it's a question, right? So Tipa, the Shabbat Allah, he had a relationship with her when he was a Ketana. But when he, when, when he became an adult, that's when he gave a get. Chalitza, how do you have a case of Chalitza? Tipata Shabala Umais. He had relations with her, then he died. And even as a minor, according to Rabbi Yochanan, right? V'chotzula Achim, and the kid, the, the brothers, had, did Chalitza. V'ayodov, now he now says Chalitza. So through, he doesn't do Chalitza, he can't. But through him, the girl becomes a Chalitza. So it says, if that's the case, me'ata afilu pachos mi ben teisha. What, if, we, if it's working through youth, so why stop at nine? Maybe it works when the kid is seven, six, five, four. Right? What's the limit? I'm Rabbi Shmuel Bar Abduma Vakini. Do you think it's like that? Vakini, it's talking like that. You're right. Vakini, tani kulantesha, tani afuimon. 
So it says, when does a, 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 a Bia start being Bia? When he's nine? So then we start, we said the Yud is also when he's nine. But it can make you for a different time he's four or five years old. Says man, no. I read about Pazim Shem, but Shubin Levi said, uh uh. May Achaz lomad Rabbi Yisur Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yisur learns from Achaz that there's a limit down. The tiny Achaz always been Pesha. Ha Achaz was out gave birth when he was nine. Because he was nine. For him ben Sheish, the Kalei ben Eser. Command Amar who Kalei ben Kachetzer and who Kalei ben Yifuna. Quite a pain. Kalei ben Kachetzer, Kalei ben Yifuna, the same one for reasons which I'm not getting into now because already almost love Miss Mark. And so, to, so it's the, it's clear that he gave birth when he was ten. But name it. So after Mantor, Haran was before Mantor. So after Mantor, the earliest we see somebody conceiving a child as nine years old. So we assume that that's the cutoff. That below that, a person cannot get married, even by youth.